Ooh, top of the line computer gaming. You know, playing games on the computer has really gotten a lot better nowadays. It wasn't too long ago that if you wanted to play games the normal way, you were bound to play on one of these consoles. Not necessarily because they were that much better in performance than the computer, it's just that they were way more convenient. And convenience is pretty much what the world works on. Why bother trying to find a PC CD ROM somewhere if my local supermarket just has some Nintendies on the shelves? Now some of you more hardcore enthusiasts may sniff your nose at that and say, ho, oh, that won't be me. I always choose the hard path. But even for the folks that did play games on their computer, like these things right here are just like little information donuts. And your computer is connected to like an infinite information noodle. So what's more convenient? Going out to a physical store to get this disc for real money? Or just using the computer you're already on to get it for cheap. In order for computer gaming to really take off, there needed to be one place where you could easily get all your games. Where grandma could buy the games easier than the local supermarket, and where hardcore Timmy could download the game faster than the seven seas. That place would turn out to be... Steam. But why am I telling you about this? Like, isn't this video supposed to be about a game? Well, forgive my boring ramblings at the start here, but like, this online game platform Steam, where everyone gets their games from nowadays, which basically stands at the core of modern computer gaming, which has become such a large market that everyone and their dog now has a gaming computer, that Steam was made by a company. And that company is called Valve. And guess what the very first game is that Valve made? Oh yeah, it's Half-Life. To say Half-Life is a classic is kind of an understatement. It launched Valve into this position where it's so well known for making good games that it doesn't really need to make that many games anymore. At the same time, there's such a fan community around it that even 25 years later, there were 35,000 people actively playing it. And there are still people to this day waiting for Half-Life 3 to come out. And I have never played it. Yep, I never played this game and boy was I scared too. Like, this game is so beloved by people because it revolutionized things at the time. But that time was 25 years ago. It's kind of like how Apple revolutionized phones with the original iPhone. Back then, having like a somewhat usable touch interface was out of this world. But by now, like this idea has been so refined that compared to original smartphones, it's kind of shit. And this game definitely does show its age when you boot it up. So what if I don't like it? What if I take all this revolutionary stuff for granted as that's now become like the norm in modern gaming? What if I'm so used to 4K HDR Ultra gaming that this experience just doesn't do it for me? Well, I took the plunge and um, it's still a freaking good game. First things first, Half-Life is a first person shooter game. So if you're not really into interacting with the world by shooting a whole bunch of things with like a variety of guns, then maybe this game isn't really for you. But don't click away just yet, because I know, a lot of these shooter games tend to be all about shooting your guns and not really about storytelling or world building at all. Which was especially true around the time that this game came out. However, let us just go and uh, start a game right here, shall we? And just, just, just see what it's like. Okay, so uh, here we are, um, Black Mesa inbound. Uh, we seem to be in like a little cart here. Uh, I see a snack machine, but I don't really see my guns just yet. So let's just go and uh, look around. Um, maybe there's a gun un hidden under the seat. No guns under the seat. Um, 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 in the bin. Maybe in the bin. Nothing in the bin. Uh, uh, I'm not seeing any guns yet. I'm hearing a lot of exposition though. Jeez, look at how far that goes down. All right, uh, let's just wait a couple minutes and then see whether maybe we'll find some guns. All right, so we're about five minutes later. Um, uh, I guess we're getting off now. This guy surely will give me his gun. He's not going to give me his gun. Uh, let me move towards him. He's walking away. What? This right here is the thing that made Half-Life stand out so much at the time. Because yeah, sure, it is an FPS, but it is heavily focused on like storytelling and world building, and it does so very well. The entire philosophy behind this game is to be as realistic as possible. But what is realism, you may ask? Well, when was the last time that you walked into a place and you got like pulled towards a person where you couldn't walk away from until they finished talking because this is an obligatory scripted event? Last week? No? Okay then, uh, when was the last time that you were literally ripped out of your body because something important happened and you had to see that in a third person cinematic way? That's never happened to you? Oh, but like, it happens in all my games though. 
except for this one. Like, the magic of Half-Life is that the entire game happens to you as you just, like, walk around in it. So, like, you don't have to wait for interact buttons or, like, for scripted events, because, like, now I walked in here, these guys started talking to me, but, you know, I can just walk away and just go over here and, you know, like, I'll just leave them be. The whole game is set up so that you experience it from, like, the eyes of the main character and you can just go wherever you want, because that's how it works in the real world. And honestly, like, it does it so freaking well. I was kind of expecting when I jumped into this game that I wouldn't really be impressed since, like, it's been 25 years since I've done this, so probably everyone has copied it right now and, like, improved a bunch on it. But then I realized that most modern games nowadays are really trying to sell their, like, cinematic movie-going experience that sometimes, like, half your game is just cutscenes where you're just doing nothing at all. This right here just feels so alive, like, everyone is out here doing their own thing. Like, I can go talk to people and they all have, like, voiced voice lines. Like, all the characters! And I can just, like, go and pick up, like, literally anything that I want to here. Like, it's crazy. Like, look! I got toilet paper! Hmm. What is this? You need toilet paper? Hold on, um, let me go and drop that. I just gave this guy toilet paper! There's also like barely any music in this game. It's mostly just like the sounds around you. And more importantly, there's no objective markers. So you really need to listen very carefully to where people tell you that you need to go, or just kind of like try and uh, figure it out yourself, uh, since this game doesn't really explicitly tell you like you need to go there or you need to go there. Um, which can definitely take some time to get used to. Don't ask me how I know. But hey, world building, storytelling, and realism are fine and all, but only if the world and story are any good. So what's this game about anyway? Well, you're playing as this guy called Gordon Freeman, who was sent to the Black Mesa Research Lab to help conduct some experiments on strange things. You can tell he's got like a PhD in theoretical physics because he just seems so tired of it all that he never says a word to anyone and seems awfully willing to put his life on the line. For real, he's here to stand like this radioactive experimentation chamber to just hear like flip a switch and then push a card right here into this thing. Naturally, it just goes completely wrong and it connects us to like these different dimensions right here with alien creatures which are also connected to us right now so yeah that just absolutely completely wrecks the place and from then on it's pretty straightforward get out of this facility and take care of anything that's trying to hurt you oh and maybe like find a way to close the portal from earth's end and on the alien planet side overall it's not really the most complex story but then again i don't really think it needs to be because, like, you're living for it, like, in the moment, and because of that, you just get carried away by that emotion of, Oh, man, this situation is so bad, we're really gonna have to go and get topside now to get out of here. Oh, I gotta defeat this monstrous thing to get to the Lambda Labs. Which is, by the way, what this logo comes from. Like, this right here, that's Lambda. I don't really want to show you too much of this world, as, like, half the fun comes from, like, not knowing what comes next, which is also very much supported by the level design. As you can see right here, there's many times, like, two or three pathways that you can go to, and you never really know which one it is. At first, like, I was pretty much freaking out about this, because, I don't know, like, do I go here for, like, the main quest, or do I go there for, like, a sight line that allows me maybe to open up that door right there? Like, I don't know. It's only when you, like, go back later and explore all the possibilities when you find that basically all of them just lead to the same place, but, I mean, you know what? That's fine. I think that this game is just so very good at giving you, like, this very real experience, and everything kind of works in service for that. Like, you have this story which gives you, like, just enough to give you this urgency to keep on going and want to keep on going. And then you have this world which is expansive enough that it feels like it, it's an actual world. Like, there's other people. It's not just a single hallway from point A to point B. Obviously, once the aliens invade, you're gonna have your whole array of weapons to fight with, which are gonna span from, like, crowbars to SMGs and sentient bugs. Yeah, um, we call this one Ted. I have to say that, like, the mechanics of this, like, switching between your guns are kind of clunky. Um, like, you have your five slots right here, and then depending on how many times you press it, you can choose your guns. So you're gonna have to press and press and press and press and press, and I hope you get the right one and you have to click it, and only then it switches. And I can tell you that in the midst of the battle, you're gonna get it wrong and probably die. Another thing that I've died to a lot is puzzles. So like this game has a lot of like this parkour stuff where you know you have to turn on cores and you have to like go through portals and like try and figure out your way around which is really fun to like change up the pace. However as you can see right here I can kind of tell that you know like you have to jump for that portal to like jump in here and then go through there but like how am I supposed to know like where the platform up top there is and there are so many times where you just like die to things that you just can't see. 
and like, urgh! So many of the puzzles in this game rely on like good parkouring skills, like jumping from platform to platform and running around, which this game just isn't really all that good at. And then combine that with like this game's approach of we're not really placing visual hints. You just go out and die and then figure out like where you die from and then just like move through that. Like that can get really, really frustrating. Like once you're like in a long play session, you're just like, oh, I want to get past this so badly. The alien planet right here is by far the weakest part of the game. Even though it looks like really beautiful, as you can see right here, um, it's like the final chapter of the game. And whereas like the first chapter of the game takes like five minutes uh, to get from here to there takes you like three hours. Like, oh man, this is bloated to all hell. And a lot of like the stuff that you need to do here to get from here to there is like the same parkour challenges with like no hints, no objective stuff and like no one speaking to you at all. At the start of the game, this is fine because like you're in this new world and you have so many questions and you don't know what's going on. So having information be drip fed to you and like taking time to get through places without having any information at all, like that works very well. But once you're here, like most of your questions are already answered and you just know that like the last thing that you need to do is like close this portal and then be done with it. So to then have like three more hours of walking and kind of the same stuff, like, huh, it just kind of really guts me. But don't let that discourage you from trying out this game. Because even though like the end part is a bit weak, like the way it ends, it's like, oh man, I want to play Half-Life 2 like right now. And this beginning stuff is just so good with like experiencing like this game as it's happening and interacting with all these people right here. So they just turn around and talk to you and you don't need to do anything. That, I mean, I can definitely see how this game just shook the world when it came out. So yeah, that's Half-Life. Even though it's like an old shooter game by now, I still think it's a really fun experience to go through, especially when on sale nowadays for just a couple of bucks. I would strongly recommend that if you want to play this game, go look for the Black Mesa game, which is like literally Half-Life, but then made by fans in 2015 to look like way better. If you want to see things in more detail, I have streamed the entire thing over on my stream channel, and I've also made like highlight videos over on this channel before as well. For future videos though, like I really want to make like a New War style single edited video for each game that I cover aside from like these videos here, because I think that they just work so well and like giving you like a real idea of like what the game is like in detail and then you don't have to sit for like part 12 out of 12. However, since I played this thing back in 2022, like that footage is like way too old to be used. So we'll just, we'll just do that for the next game that we cover. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like this has given you some ideas like what Half-Life is about and whether you may want to play it or not. I just want to make sure that these videos are like lighthearted and go over like the general gist of the game and not really into specifics like, oh, this feature said or these FPS numbers because who really cares? Like, you ever bought a game because it got two FPS over the other game? I don't think so. If you do enjoy the content that I make, come check out Overtime, which is like my exclusive videos for $1 a month. I'm going to make extra videos right after this, where today we're going to go try out some of the Half-Life multiplayer. Oh yeah, Half-Life also has a multiplayer, which I didn't really cover in this video because I didn't really play it. Um, I felt Half-Life was like more important as like the story of itself, uh, even though the multiplayer has also been somewhat influential, like launching this small little game called uh, Counter-Strike, which has been like some of the best played games even 20 years later. So, oh boy, has this game been influential. <laughs> like, it is insane. That said though, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And also, Happy New Year. I hope 2024 will be like a great year for both you and me, and also a year with many brand new videos coming to this channel. Uh, let me just say that great returns are to be expected. But yeah, that's for later. So thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.